Good morning to everybody. Uh, my topic is a stigma of uh, dependence, and it is um, giving an insight to what somebody goes. The reason why we chose this topic is there are nearly uh, 35 million people who are uh, drug users, use, unsafe drug users, and then only one in seven refuse the treatment. And we could be specific to alcohol, which is post commerce drug abuse. Uh, nearly three million people die related to alcohol, almost represents and 3% of 5% of an, uh, death overall death. So why it has been ignored or it's been underdiagnosed, the reason is even among our medical uh, fraternity, we feel that uh, they doesn't have much knowledge or not much thought about this. Uh, this is a uh, disorder, it's a brain related disorder. They think it's in the just behavioral disturbances. So we and other facts, other reasons why they are they are not even comfortable also to address this uh, uh, psychosocial and the family related issues when it comes to an alcohol uh, uh, alcohol or any drug related use because in uh, dependence it not just affects the patient's health it also affects the patient's uh, psychological, social, uh, family occupations, finance and it affects all the aspects. And this might might be difficult for the physician to address some issues. And other reasons, the third reasons could be even among, among our uh, among our colleagues, many of them uh, drink a substance, so they also may be not comfortable addressing these issues to the uh, patient who are going through this problem. And they just see this as a you know, behavioral disturbance. Uh, and also, they also fed up of these people because you know this is a chronic problem. Okay, they also feel if the patient is uh, by, uh, uh, doing it purposefully, they are very uncomfortable, uh, uh, uncomfortable, and also they they are very uh, what to say? They are not uh, aversion. They develop little aversion towards uh, treating uh, this. Uh, patient because of multiple times they get into uh, the same issues okay uh, and even the uh, patient themselves you see also they say immediately i don't have a problem so i don't have an addiction i can control with my willpower but i don't want to put it to as uh, but that that will not come on here you don't also think he says if i think i'll quit but he never think about it okay so you should tell the patient that okay, that to tell them, uh, you know, this is an addiction. This is you are, you are progressing towards an addiction, or you are already a, a dependent. To tell that we should also have a little knowledge about what is called a dependence, what is called as an addictions. So I'll tell that we follow as an expert certain criteria to tell these people are an addictions and these people are getting into a dependence. The first criteria is an increase in the tolerance. If you see them, the first the patient would have been. Uh, taking only a very uh, small quantity of an uh, substance, you must be taking in. If you take an uh, example, I'm giving you an alcohol or nicotine, only 30 uh, ml, or you have taken only half a pint of a beer or only one uh, cigarette in a day. But you see, in a slow, in a in a slow increase in this quantity. Okay, in a six months of duration, you would have been taking in one beer to one four beer or one cigarette to one five cigarettes because our body to keep repeating the same uh, drug for the, the sufficient duration that would not give you a pleasure or thing. So they would increase in the quantity to get that pleasure. So this increasing the quantity could definitely cause a neurotoxin and damage certain uh, brain structures as well as to the other organs. Uh, Damage. So this is the first criteria to tell that somebody is in the progress or is already in human addictions. And second is they'll have a withdrawal symptoms. So that's why you tell many clients, even uh, when you try to quit, your mind says, no, I want to quit. Okay, your body will not cooperate. Many people uh, even tell me sometimes, so uh, when I quit the substance, I'm not uh, able to sleep. When I quit the substance, I have a tremors, a smoking, I have a problem of uh, constipation, cannabis, I'm not able to concentrate, I get restless. And this is one of the great misconceptions I can see even among our colleagues. Cannabis uh, doesn't have any withdrawal uh, symptoms. No, it doesn't maybe like an alcohol and cocaine, which may not have a uh, 
severe physical withdrawal symptom, but definitely it has a lot of withdrawal symptoms and uh, psychological withdrawals. And it is a very addictive forming drug. And many people say, you know, it is, doesn't cause an addiction. And yeah, many drugs has a medicinal value. Even alcohol has a medicinal value. But that has to be in a very smaller quantity, right? And that, that is only in the medicine. But the amount of puck you take in a cannabis, okay, that doesn't have an, any medicinal uh, uh, value at all. So rationalizing that in a way that it is not an addiction, so all that are way that they rationalize their behavior. Okay? So people develop and come back to topic, they develop and withdrawal symptoms when they try to reduce the quantity of the uh, substance. Okay, And third is, okay, they develop in uh, craving. Okay, they they will have a strong urge to procure the drug in spite of any consequences uh, they have. It can be to a particular time or they can do anything to procure. Can be seen even in certain movies how risk taking behaviors they go once they start having that craving or uh, to buy that uh, drugs they can. Uh, they can take a lot of loan or they can even steal money or they can uh, monkey the properties at uh, home okay uh, to use it for the drug and to seek and that kind of a pleasure they wanted this is a third criteria to tell someone there is addict and the fourth criteria is inability to control the quantity I means they think that okay i can control it i can control it they can say only in the bubble if it comes to an action okay when they're taking in a very take very once they start taking a very small quantity of the drug, they get highly into an intoxication and they get into a slosh and they get all kind of a behavioral disturbances once they get into a substance. So it is an inability to control the quantity of the drug. And the first one is okay, um, uh, salience. The most of the day, the first priority for them is get into one drug, get out of the drug, and most of the time they get into uh, that pleasure-seeking behavior. Okay? Even if, the, let it be the most important events in this life, okay, in terms of academic, in terms of family, in terms of occupations, okay, they doesn't bother about it. They first priority to get into one drugs and get out of this drug, okay? That means get out of its effects. So after knowing all these uh, consequences, the sixth criteria, after knowing all these consequences related to this uh, drug, uh, example is, okay, health-related consequences. Initially, you would have seen at least the one position for is a, a health-related problem. Example, you, you might have seen at least for the gastritis for using his nicotine and alcohol. But the a doctor would have also advised him that this is because of your drug intake and it has to be stopped. It is more specific. Some people, they have well tolerated, some genetically they are prone, they are not well tolerated or even a milder use can get into a severe organ damage. Okay, that is always a subject you I tell some clients, okay. Uh, see, there are people who take a whole quarter and get started. There are certain people, 90 quarters, they cannot get started. This is all the form of a kinetic and genetic, okay which all involves them and makes the patient very vulnerable if he even takes a smaller quantity. And he always rationalizes with other people or defend himself. Oh, those people take so much, he's there, but I'm taking very less. Why do you call it? But it's a subject, right? The damage to you is very such. such people are there. But if you see, he will also come. Don't worry about it. It's only taking a certain time that to reach and to your area, your extent, but if you continue to take it, you will come to this other way. You can generally uh, give an insight towards a uh, client. So, in spite of knowing his health related consequences, and second, in spite of his uh, marital disharmony and the family related uh, problem because of his uh, abnormal behaviors or related to a uh, drug, okay, uh, and occupationals, maybe you might have quit the job or you may not be regular to the jobs or you may be terminated from the job. And social also, you would have been a good identified and respectful person in the society. Recently, his respect would have gone down, that would have affected his uh, uh, in identity in the society. In spite of knowing all the consequences, you wouldn't stop the drug, you continue to produce the drug. So out of the six criteria, we generally tell they fulfill three uh, for a sufficient of one duration, 
you could call them as these and dependent or addicted and don't think only when they go into to an addiction you have to treat these people okay this because uh, addictions is a very uh, itself and uh, severity is high so even when the patient has an abuse also you should start the treatment okay if they are genetically prone there are certain drugs like an illegal drugs can abuse to and cocaine lsd if they are genetically prone even the single drug could definitely cause a severe uh, uh, brain damage and that could form that could be a permanent uh, psychotic or anxiety disorder or it could even damage a certain organs in the body so i should tell them that even if you are not addiction this is the way if you go through the the progress and this will definitely into an get into an addict and and it's very difficult to treat that condition than rather than quitting now so you to quit the drug now okay this on the mind inside if you start giving them they will start understanding because many times when we address this oh no the client patient says that oh, no none of them told i didn't know about this okay i don't know it's independent okay so giving a little or two minutes or three minutes explanations about this to the client would definitely helpful for them to uh, get out of this uh, drug and uh, okay now sir patients understood what else uh, could we do now to get out of this uh, so see i tell people first you understand that you have an illness only really, then you should show and change right if and if you diagnose somebody is in diabetes he is in diabetes okay so you have to take it uh, plus you also do some lifestyle modification this is they for any chronic disease including our chronic disease of dependence so when you take an uh, addiction okay don't think you can control only with your will power okay you need to follow certain strategies and with the medication as initially i said okay your body will not cooperate when you suddenly stop your drug and there are better drugs which can reduce those withdrawals of the which could be used only for the very shorter duration that could help you to get out very smoothly or following them we can start them on some anti craving drugs okay we want to go to two biological way start which can reduce your craving your very much as well as certain lifestyle modifications also could be helpful so what should be done is how to prevent them because people have their own way of uh, more way of pattern of behaviors that could put them high risk to a dependence or relapse so he quit the substance but he he decides to quit date but he continue to be with the people or around with the people who takes a drug and if you be in the same locations where you used been uh, drinking or he takes uh, he been uh, vulnerable for dependence but he keep thinking he can be using as a vocational use of alcohol these are the high risk factors that keep the patients in the dependent for long duration so certain things has to be said for the, the clients okay uh, like uh, it can be internal cause and it could also be an external cause what would be the internal cause or if you ask me? uh the grain that is the greatest internal cause or interpersonal conflicts could be in cause okay or underlying psychiatric disorder could be another cause an external factor friends locations okay and peer pressures or could be the so you should explain the client or patient how to put the control this external pressure the first i tell them let us see if you have it uh if you plan to quit you should avoid the person who you are going with because that could put you at high risk in the relapse once you put that person don't think that that person will immediately accept your refusal he will use all the tactical ways to get into sorry get into you and suspect he can plead to show you an aggression he can plead at least for me you come only once you just don't have to drink you just sit there for some time that ends up he should use an aggression you are not my friend i am going to terminate you i can going to reject you as a friend or they can also use uh, uh, other languages to get into you and substance but don't fall for it and you should be aware of it these are the tactics you should be uh, these are tactics that could get into you on drugs and start saying no for it and second is okay i uh, and also you should use an assertive way to tell it some people you can say that i say people don't eat around the world okay 
no, this is a base and this is a cause. Okay, we use all the ways. Okay, your brain already wanted it. Okay, there is a war going between your mind and uh, patient calling. You want to use it and you don't want to use it. If you spend a lot of durations, you will definitely convince you and get you to the substance. So in that war, if you want to use, sometimes I tell the patient use an assertive way also. I definitely tell you, for good people, that good people will definitely understand you and you will not uh, disconnect your friendship. We say it's a good that you have quit the substance. If, if, it's a, if it's not a right friend, definitely you'll tell all the way to get into a uh, substance. So you can use your assertive way. Please don't call me for any more time for using this recreational drugs, which is causing me in hazards. Don't call it. If you don't, please don't call it. Just tell them in one way and don't spend more time and tell the people just 30 seconds or one, one minute you can use it to explain and just get out of uh, this place. Okay. And uh, locations could be also a uh, greater uh, risk factor for uh, such people. Uh, in spite, I tell the people they are very optim more optimistic in the way and they try to uh, go and test themselves. Are they having a craving? They go and sit with the friends. And they say that, oh, see, I'm not drunk, sir. I'm, 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 I'm drinking for the last, uh, I've sat there for the last four weeks. I did not even have a once craving for this drugs. I tell clients, see, in a short time, even uh, very too high severity people also put short for a very short duration of the time. So, and this is not the right way also to test your willpower. Uh, there are a few people, they have complete established of uh, Dependence, they put Sabri Malay Male and they can quit the drugs for nearly uh, four, six weeks to eight weeks. So, and they say that clients themselves they have a strong will, I don't deny it, they haven't willpower, but that's not the right way to test your willpower. So, I tell clients don't do that because you are always in a high risk way. Maybe you you are control for four weeks, but if you are in sixth week, eighth week, twelfth week, or your, if you are uh, three months or four months, you would definitely have a high risk in getting into a relapse. I travel 160 speed per day. Then every day I'm putting my risk, right? I'm not, uh, now I haven't met an accident. Doesn't mean that I've never met an accident. So it's also a very risky. So tell them it's a high risk. Okay. So don't go there and sit and try it yourself because one day there is a possibility you could relapse. So that high risk places, if you avoid, that could be much better, can be explained to the patient. So, so these are the, some external ways can be sent in very shorter durations, which patients can have a beneficial or useful. And uh, other one is internal problem. Apart from the external issues, they will have their own uh, internal craving okay uh, let me take once so most of the people they think is let me take once at least today okay uh, from now i will not take it this is an high risk okay you take even once okay if you get into a relapse okay so i tell when you have a craving and most of the cravings initially it stays for a short duration the peak then attains a play too or it, it, it subsides. So you can use a postpone technique if you have a brain. Tomorrow I will start drinking or I'll use a little today I won't drink. More than this postpone technique, self realization is one which could be very helpful. Start having an understanding here. yourself. Okay. See all, see all the consequences you have faced because of a drug, including your admissions in a psychiatric hospital is not a great lesson. Okay. Understand from that the family issues, the financial loss, okay, all this has happened because of this problem. And if you take once, the risk is so high that you keep repeating the substance. So you can completely stop this easier than, okay, occasional users because the person who are dependent, they can be abstinent for a very long duration, then uh, they can be in. Uh, controlled or drinking, they fail in a controlled drinking. Many of them fail in controlled drinking. So tell them that the craving you can use a postpone thinking. This is an automatic thought. The craving comes; it's not in your mind. So when I discharge, also when I ask the client, "Will you have a craving?" If somebody tells me, "No, sir, I'll not have a craving." I tell them, "No, oh, you have a craving at times, maybe not like how you used to have it. Here also you, may, you might have a craving. If you should explain them." But if the craving is there, you understand it, it's a disease, you start it, okay, you might continue to take in and you will face all the health-related problems what you have been faced for drugs. 
such a durations. Got it? So this is how you should challenge uh, those uh, braving. Okay. Apart from that, uh, postpone technique. You can also use another technique. Instead of that, you can take something else, uh, which, uh, which is uh, less harm or it doesn't cause. It. You can take in water. I say some people coffee or tea. You can take it or immediately eat something. That if your your stomach is full, your craving also could be less. If you're too hungry, the craving also could be higher. So eat immediately. That can have a uh, uh, lesser of craving now for you. Okay, these are the few ways that you should tell our clients how should be how should he control his craving. Uh, uh, and uh, what what I will say, well, apart from the, the internal the intra problem can be in this interpersonal problem. They have an underlying psychiatric disorder that would also be a greater risk for to get into a uh, relapse. Okay. Many of the social anxiety problems, or uh, if they have in uh, comorbid uh, depressions with the patients, or uh, interpersonal conflicts with a family member, which is very constant, could also be a great risk factor for it to get into a relapse in human addiction. So I say, uh, uh, finds that, okay, uh, those things, once you put in a 15 days or a three weeks of a duration, Write out the cause, how you are going to address these issues of uh, uh, issues after uh, three weeks of time. First two weeks, you concentrate only, you have to come out and you concentrate only. You should have a pleasant withdrawal symptoms, and your mind and your body should be uh, cooperate uh, with the treatment. Okay. Uh, if there is a comorbid anxiety and depression, there are better medications that can be put to the patients which will not cause them any organ damage or it also can be used for a very long duration of time without damaging any of this uh, organ. Yeah. So if there is an intramarital dysharmony or certain things, please address this uh, marital uh, dysharmony, what way could be done and why also should have not understood this as a disorder and that's how this behavioral disturbance is important. Our family members may not understand and they, they think he is doing it very purposefully and uh, just to irritate us, he is doing it. They could tell, but tell the family members that this is a disorder and this is how it should be treated. And many of them must come out of it. And this person also could come out of this uh, thing, okay, if you help him in a very uh, right out way. And the stress also need to be addressed here, okay. The, I tell generally how should you handle uh, stress. I will just tell it in a very brief way. The, uh, the certain stress can be avoided, and certain case can be um, altered. And certain stress, you should think that you should be adapted into that stress in spite of. I'll, I'll give you a few examples how you can just uh, briefly tell in a uh, two minutes of your. Uh, clinical practice to tell the patient either it can be avoided or not. See, I'll give an example. When, when, hello, when, 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 when one person is coming to you and claims you that, okay, sir, I have a stress factor, okay, and my job is my stress. Okay, you can definitely tell, see if your job is stress, this can be avoided or altered, right? Example, see, if you're if your manager of your company giving you too many deadlines and uh, uh, too many works, you compromise with your salary okay give importance to your quality of life if if you feeling at stress and even if you if you are going to get a five percent or ten percent less from your uh, previously earned salary compromise with it because if you're not compromised with it you will definitely you are all adaptively coping with this drug on all the five percent or ten percent you are going to put into when you tell the problems so you can definitely uh think that this can be altered and the present jobs could be avoided. It can be avoided, right? And certain things cannot be avoided. Example, uh, if you have a conflict with your uh, uh, wife or it has a marital uh, disorder, you know, the students, uh, who, students who is in, uh, who is in a teacher or professor or a HOD, who is a uh, senior, you cannot immediately get transferred, okay? Uh, that such stress could have been the reason for it to repeatedly improve the substance. You tell them, alter it. If you, if you are meeting him, you meet him in a very shorter duration of time. 
and any seniors or anybody who is not going to be there for a very long duration, they're going to be only for the very shorter uh, duration of time. Tell them that this is only for it, and yeah, or it's only for the six months. And you try to alter till the six months. Once you're there, I'll adapt to it. But I'm not going to take into on any drugs which could definitely cause me, which will not cause a solution to my problem. It will worsen my uh, problems. You got. So apart from this uh, psychosocial way of managing it, there is a better way of controlling and framing. We have an excellent drugs uh, to start with, which could control the craving very much. Okay, and each drugs has a different uh, anti craving drug. Example for uh, for alcohol, we do an acomprasate, and uh, for recording, we start them with an bupropion for. Opioids, we use methadone and uh, buprenorphine. We have a specific clinic also for this, uh, this illegal drugs because going into an illegal drug, better they can use a uh, buprenorphine or methadone, uh, which could reduce their craving. And the antisocial behaviors also can be uh, reduced. So sometimes, in spite of me, tell the patient, they say that I find it very difficult to control that uh, craving. How could you help me? So they could come you, they can ask you, uh, seek a help from you. You can put some anti craving drug for them. It's very basic. I'll tell as a basic also, you can start them with. If they have, doesn't have any major organ failures of a liver or, or renal dysfunctions, naltroxone. All this can be started. If needed, you can also seek your colleagues' experts' opinion so that it can be minimized. On, on this, this can also help the clients very much. And apart from this, you should also teach them how to have a problem solving skills. Example, I tell people, okay. So, Sir, I couldn't solve my problem, they ask. See, it's very, uh, if any problem is there, put plan A and plan B. And if put that the plan A, we choose this behavior, this is what the plan A behavior is, choose a plan B, and this is what the, my plan B behavior is, and take advantages of both the behavior, okay, and fix on both. Okay? And no regret about it later. Some people tell that, oh, sir, I'm, uh, so I'm not that, those times when I take that decision that was not right. I tell my clients at this situation, whenever you take in some decision that is a right decision, that situation, you start retrospectively. Many things we feel that we think that you would have changed it, but that's not the thing. Always no regrets about your past uh, decisions that that particular time. The behaviors which I've chosen is a very right behavior, not a right choice. And right steps I have chosen it and no regret about it. And last thing I want to tell you is now benzodiazepines. Okay, I see many prescriptions now. People initially presents with you and only in a problem of a sleeplessness. Benzodiazepines, we always see a sleeplessness only and symptom. We don't uh, treat that as a disorder because of always the sleeplessness will have an underlying many disorders. So when a patient has a sleeplessness, you could uh, tell the patients not to use this benzodiazepine more than three to four weeks because the benzodiazepine works similar like an alcohol in the brain and it can also damage in your brain. Yeah, we put benzodiazepine if warranted, it can be put for the very long duration also. But elderly people, all this can you don't have to put for a very long duration. Okay, it can be put for a very short duration. In case if you if, if you if you prefer to put uh, this. Uh, and specifically, more commonly, Alprazolam, Zoltresh, all this they use for very short, uh, long duration. There are a better drug which is not an addictive forming uh, potentials, okay, which could help them to have a good uh, sleep as well as it can also treat them uh, for the underlying uh, psychiatric uh, conditions. So, anybody which you put uh, treat them with an uh, benzodiazepine, you should be aware that that should be put for only shorter. Uh, duration of time of uh, three weeks to trial of the six weeks. And later that we should consider to stop uh, that uh, benzodiazepine. Okay. Uh, and from this, I'll uh, conclude my topic. Uh, thank you.